Friends, good evening and welcome to Night Prayer in Holy Week, and particularly on this Wednesday evening. You are really welcome and it's lovely to have you here this evening. Um, you'll find it really helpful, I think, this evening to have a couple of things ready. You might want to have a Bible to hand, that would be really helpful, and also the Night Prayer for Holy Week leaflet would be really helpful so you can join in the prayers. Our reading tonight, if you want to get it ready, is in Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, and beginning to read at verse 1. Mark 14 and verse 1. Well, so here we are on the third day, well, fourth, I suppose, if you include Palm Sunday, uh, of Holy Week. On the Monday, of course, Jesus had cursed the fig tree. He'd wept over Jerusalem and its hardness of heart. He'd cleared the temple of those who were making money instead of praying. Then on the Tuesday, you remember, Jesus went in and taught in the temple. He walked up to the Mount of Olives and predicted all that was going to happen, the terrible judgment that was going to come to Jerusalem and one day indeed to the whole world as he returned as the triumphant Son of Man. And then, of course, on the Wednesday, we don't quite know what happened during the day, but we do know that at some point there was a meal in the home of Simon the leper. And it was there that something extraordinary happened that is carried on being told wherever the gospel message has gone through the generations and across the world. And we're going to be hearing that story this evening. So let's come now, shall we, and be still as we begin night prayer. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. May the angels of God guard us through the night and quieten the powers of darkness. May the Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and to glory. As we come to the end of the day, we come seeking God's fresh forgiveness and grace this evening. Let us bring our darkness into God's light. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. We're going to now join together in the words of Psalm 139 that beautifully speak of the Lord's knowledge of us and his presence with us throughout our lives in the daytime and in the night. As ever, please join with me in the words, in the verses that are even numbered, two, four, etc. Answer me when I call, God of my righteousness. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. 
Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned when as yet there were none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now, we hear our reflection for this evening from Sam. Good evening, and welcome to our Holy Week Reflections here at St John's. For those that haven't met me before, my name is Sam. Before I begin, it'd be helpful to grab a Bible and maybe a pen and paper if you'd find that helpful as well. But first, let me pray for it as we begin. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the sacrifice he made on that cross. I pray for us tonight. I pray that you open our hearts to hear your word and that I can speak that clearly and faithfully. Amen. So tonight, we're going to look at Mark chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. The same story, however, is told in John chapter 12, Matthew chapter 26, and Luke chapter 7. It's just useful for you guys to know that, just because I will be referring to John chapter 12 as well, just to help us understand it a bit better. But first, let's read Mark chapter 14. Now, the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and to kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Now some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told, in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money, so he walked for an opportunity to hand him over. So I want to start with this. Think about a time you've given your best for somebody else. Think of things where you've put so much effort into something. It could be work, it could be relationships, or friendships, or something like that. Just a time when you've given your best for somebody else. Now, keep that in mind just as we go through tonight's talk. So, imagine you're in the Middle East, it's the first century. You're in a house, and there's a low table, and you're reclined around it to eat. 
you're sat with friends and you're eating food. Now, that's exactly where we find Jesus and the disciples, in the home of Simon the leper. But this isn't just a gathering. John chapter 12 tells us that it's a dinner in Jesus' honour. So just before this story happens, in John chapter 11, it tells us how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And this dinner was put together by Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. So here we are, and his friends were enjoying time together. Mark chapter 14, verse 3, tells us, A woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Now, there's a couple of important points that I want to make. The first one is, this woman is Mary, but we're going to come back to her in just a second. But the other thing in this verse is the perfume. Now, Mark tells us it's a very expensive perfume. So nard in the first century was extremely expensive. It was worth over a year's wage. So to put it into perspective, nowadays it would cost about £15,000 for that same perfume. But for Mary, Martha and Lazarus, that would have been their entire worth, their entire life savings, right there in that jar. But not only was it expensive, it was also particularly important in Jesus' time as the smell was associated with royalty. It was the smell of a king. But what does Mary do? She uses the entire jar on Jesus. But as we read on, the disciples weren't impressed by Mary's actions. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. They saw Mary's actions as a waste, that this expensive perfume was just wasted. But what did Jesus think? Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Jesus knows what's in store for him over the coming days, and so does Mary. We hear in John chapter 11 that she believes that Jesus is exactly who he says he is, that he's the Messiah, the Son of God. So the next day, after this meal, Jesus will ride into Jerusalem on a donkey, and because of that perfume, he will smell of a king. The following day, at the Last Supper, he will smell of a king. And Jesus says to his friend, she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Mary gives the very best for Jesus, and her actions are so important that this story is told four times in each of the gospels. Mark chapter 14, John chapter 12, Matthew 26, and Luke chapter 7. In John chapter 11, we're introduced to Lazarus, Mary and Martha, and John 11 verse 2 says this. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. The first time in the Bible that she's mentioned at all, she's mentioned as the one that did that thing for Jesus. That's how incredible her actions were that man. Mary gives her very best, but what about you? If you're listening tonight and think, I already give everything for Jesus, then great. The passage tells us that Jesus thinks it's beautiful. He loves it, he smiles on it, and he smiles on you. But what about those who aren't giving everything for Jesus? The ones who hesitate, wondering whether this is even true, or what people might think. If that's you, then look at Mary in the story. Jesus is going to the cross and she gives her very best for him, knowing what he's sacrificing, both for her and for us. She gives Jesus her treasure and in Jesus, she finds an even richer eternal treasure. And that treasure is up for grabs, for you and for me right now. Can I encourage you over this Easter period to think about what this means for you? If you've got questions, as a church, we'd love to hear them from you. You can contact us through the website, through Twitter or through Facebook, and we'd love to help you discover more about who this Jesus person is. 
But as I finish this evening, I'm going to leave you with a question. The woman in this story gives her best for Jesus. Do you? Thank you so much, Sam, for that. We're going to respond now in some responses you'll find on the paper and then uh, the Nunc Dimittis, those ancient words, the Song of Simeon. Uh, but let's be still just for a moment as we respond to the scripture that we've heard read and unfolded. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And with Simeon, we join together as we say these words. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now a few prayers. On this night, the chief priests and teachers of the law were plotting to kill Jesus. We take a few moments to pray for all those we know who have no time for Jesus and the gospel message. How we pray their hearts may be changed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, a woman whose name Mark doesn't even give us showed such practical, costly love for her Lord. So we pray for all who follow Jesus that we might know more of his overflowing love for us and our hearts may be filled with costly love in return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus spoke of the call always to help the poor. So we pray for all who are poor, without resources, without money or shelter, that they may find help and that we would do what we can to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, Judas agreed to betray his Lord. So we pray for ourselves, for all the times when we have betrayed the Lord, maybe not to death, but by our words, sometimes by our silence, often by behaviour that has shown nothing of Christ's love and kindness. How we pray the Lord would change us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And some of our closing comments. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, 
Help us to see and know your love for us so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now just a few quiet moments to bring our own prayers at close of day, perhaps to lift our loved ones or those who are on our hearts into God's everlasting arms. so we entrust ourselves and all those for whom we've prayed to the Lord. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. So may God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us this evening. Pray you have a good night's rest. And if you can, do join us tomorrow night on Maundy Thursday at eight o'clock. And may the Lord richly bless you.